guys. Uh, okay, I think we're recording now. I don't know if you got that first, but anyways, okay, guys. So we got um, this year's a 2004 Mark IV Polo uh, TDI, the 1.4, running the AMF engine. So basically, it needs to. You got to set the injectors now. All that you're basically doing is you're just trying to prevent the injector from bottoming out. Uh, from what I understand, uh, don't quote me on this, I believe this is electronically actuated and this is just to prevent it from bottom out. So how you set this basically, uh, you would basically rotate your crank, never use the cam gears on that. Uh, as you can see, glow plugs have been removed, ease of rotation, and you'd always move this in a clockwise direction, right? Don't go anti-clockwise because uh, there's a whole lot of gears and things you want to take up all the slack in the gears. So you don't want that stuff floating freely so basically then what you do you would then use a dial gauge or something to determine that this uh roller here is on the highest point uh because you're trying to determine the bottoming out of this so basically then according to the manual you would now decide so this is basically on um i think actually just past tvc but just give you an example so then uh, you would then take an allen key basically and then rotate it to full in till the res resistance comes so resistance is right about there uh, you don't want to force it, just where it, where it bottoms out. Because keep in mind, you got your injector nozzles there. You don't want to put force on this. You're going to destroy your injector. Then from here on, according to the manual, you must rotate 225 degrees out. Uh, obviously, you use a gauge, dial gauge. But I'm going a little bit past 180. Around about there, 270 is about there. So it's more or less in this area here. And then obviously, you would take this nut, turn it down, um, and do check. Uh, don't do this just once off and just let it start the car. Do a few cycles, double check it. I've done this about three times, so I know all my settings are correct. As you can see, I just removed the nut back a bit, and then I tighten it in. Um, just to give you guys an example, uh, let me just see if I can do this with one hand. But that's around about where it was. So I'm just gonna hand tighten that. This needs to be torqued to 30 Newton meters. I don't know how much that is in foot pound, but that's basically what you're looking at here. It's gonna hold that in place. And then basically, uh, I use, my eyes up, but that's already on the upstroke, so I've already passed that. Uh, let me just quickly get two on the uh, on the stroke. I uh, just need someone to hold the camera. Let's see here. Got that in there. And I'm using this now as a as an indicator. Now the motor has a bit of resistance, so it's a very good idea to remove the glow plugs. Basically, we then just rotate it till this one's here. So you can basically ah, look at the back side here. See so here you've got the uh, camp roll there. So that, you should be at the maximum of this. Uh, see if I can do that quickly with one hand while holding the camera. So as you can see, that's not in the firing position just yet. This is quite the challenge with one hand. Okay, right there, got it there. And I'm going to just rotate this. I need to go more. Keeping in mind, four-stroke engine, camshaft rotates half the speed of the crank. Lots of excitement happening here while I try and rotate with one hand. Now notice it's not always where it is there, so you really got to make sure you've got the full compression stroke. So it's much easier to use a dial gauge to determine the highest on that so this is a very backyard method i don't recommend using this you know do it if you do it properly you'll only do it once if you do it this way you're going to take it a few times but it's just you just mainly to explain the concept what people need to do to uh, set this up okay anyway i'm really struggling to get this thing in there with one hand basically i'll put that on the crank pulley there all in place there and then you'd use the dial gauge to determine the maximum height of this guy here, which is round about there. Okay, let's see how good I can guess. So then this will then bottom out at 180 degrees. About, yeah, see, I didn't get it. So I'm putting it right back to where it was. Probably needs to go a little bit more. Major excitement as the wrench goes around the bolt. Uh, let's see that. See there, it's around about there. Checking bottoming out. 
still not quite there. If I just decide to hold the camera, this would be a lot faster. Okay, right. And kind of about there. Still not. Which are basically you guys get the idea. Uh, I think I've actually passed the uh passed the high lift there. But the main goal is just to prevent the bottoming out of the injector. So the concept still remains. See here. Yeah, that's past it. That's definitely past it. It's so around about there. Rotate 180. Bottom up right there. There we go. So that's the high port, the high point. Rotating 180. Some some cars from the bottom up point. See, that's just if you do with the finger, just like there, and it stops, just like that. So that's the bottoming out point. Um basically full compression of the injector. So some cars require 90, 180, or 225. Now when you're setting the 225, ah, batteries, batteries a little bit low. Can I get this flashback on? No, I can't. Okay, so when you're setting the, the 225, well, you can't see anything. Um, but when you're setting it on 225, do use a dial gauge uh, or uh, some kind of angle, angular, mechanism to put that there or basically long on the short rotate the engine clockwise till this lobe here is maximum lift and uh, this one is maximum depression rotate lightly till full lock rotate back 180 degrees torque down to 30 newton meters that's the long on the short of it i hope this video helps my phone's battery is dying so i'm going to leave you guys with that